Okay. Well, um, good evening, everyone, and welcome. Um, we want to thank you for your participation and interest in the State Road 44 at Kepler Road Roundabout Project. Um, we welcome those attending this public meeting, public hearing, excuse me, in person here at the Sanborn Activity Center, as well as online or on the phone. My name is Todd Helton, and I'm the Florida Department of Transportation Project Manager for this project. This public hearing is for the financial project identification number 431922-1. The purpose of this project is to enhance operations and safety at the intersection of State Road 44 and Kepler Road by replacing the existing traffic signal with a roundabout. This public hearing is being held to provide you with an opportunity to learn about the planned improvements and provide input. At this time, I'd like to thank the elected officials and government partners who are joining us this evening. We'll now begin the presentation. Following the presentation, we'll open the formal public comment period to hear your questions and comments. Questions and comments will be addressed in writing after the hearing. Instructions for how to provide comments will be provided during the presentation. Thanks. Thank you, Todd. Again, my name is Carolyn Fitzwilliam. I'm a communication consultant for the department and I'm hosting this virtual part. So the purpose of this hearing is to present the design concepts to the community to update you on the project schedule and to provide you with an opportunity to provide input. This hearing also serves as an official forum for the public to express opinions and concerns about the proposed project. Persons may be attending this public hearing in person at the Sanborn Activity Center online via GoToWebinar or by telephone. A virtual public meeting about this project was also held in August of 2020. Public participation in this hearing is encouraged and solicited without regard to race, color, religion, sex, age, national origin, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Jennifer Smith the Florida Department of Transportation District 5 Title VI Coordinator by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Deland, Florida 32720 by telephone at 386-943-5367 or by email at jennifer.smith2 at dot.state.fl.us. Persons may also contact Jacqueline Paramore, the FDOT statewide Title VI coordinator, by mail at 605 Swanee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399, by phone at 850-414-4753, or by email at Jacqueline.Paramore, which is J-A-C-Q-U-E-L-I-N-E, dot P-A-R-A-M-O-R-E at D-O-T dot state dot F-L dot U-S. This public hearing is being held in accordance with Florida Statute 339.155 regarding transportation planning, Section 335.199 regarding access management, Section 120.525 related to meetings, hearings, and workshops, and Section 286.011, Florida's Government in the Sunshine Law. Notifications for this public hearing included letters and project information emailed to elected officials and local agencies on December 23, 2020. Notification letters and project information sent by U.S. mail to property owners within 300 feet of the project right-of-way, also mailed on December 3, 23, 2020. Advertisements placed in the Daytona Beach News Journal on January 3rd and January 10th. Notifications also appeared in the Florida Administrative Register and on the FDOT Public Notices webpage. The FDOT also distributed a news release to local media outlets. This project is located in Volusia County along State Road 44 from west of Kepler Road to east of Talisman Lane. The purpose of the project is to enhance operations and safety at the intersection of State Road 44 and Kepler Road. The existing intersection consists of one travel lane in each direction with right and left turn lanes along both State Road 44 and Kepler Road. Currently, there are no sidewalks or bicycle lanes. Bicyclists are using the paved shoulders and bicycle through lanes. 
Future developments are planned in three of the four quadrants of the intersection. The existing intersection experiences significant congestion and traffic delays in the morning and evening peak hours. Based on traffic volumes from 2017, intersection approach delays ranged from 48 seconds in the morning peak hour to 141 seconds in the evening peak. That means traffic backups can extend a quarter of a mile at this intersection. The intersection also has had a history of crashes. From 2015 through 2019, there were 76 total crashes reported, with 55% resulting in injuries and 22% involving angle or left turn crashes. The department analyzed a variety of options to enhance safety and relieve congestion at this intersection. Taking into account the projected amount of traffic using the intersection, um, I'm sorry, taking into account the amount of traffic using the intersection in 2045, the two options that demonstrated the largest improvement in traffic operations were an enhanced signal option or a roundabout. The enhanced signal that was evaluated would have provided two through lanes in all directions with dedicated right and left turn lanes on both eastbound and westbound State Road 44 and northbound Kepler Road, and two dedicated left turn lanes and a right turn lane on southbound Kepler Road. The roundabout option provides two lanes in all directions with additional right turn bypass lanes, which allow traffic to turn right from eastbound and westbound State Road 44 to Kepler Road, as well as from northbound Kepler Road to eastbound State Road 44 without entering the roundabout. One factor that led the department to choose the roundabout option was the safety benefit compared with a signalized intersection. While roundabouts are not always the best scenario for every location, Roundabouts are a proven countermeasure to reduce the most serious types of accidents at intersections. These serious crashes are often left turn or angle crash crashes that happen during left turn or crossing movements. According to a 2018 feasibility study, is it, it is estimated that the chance of serious injury or fatal crashes at this intersection is reduced by 70% with a roundabout as compared to the existing signal. Roundabouts reduce the number of conflict points or areas where vehicles can cross paths and potentially collide. At a traditional signalized intersection, there are 32 conflict points, while roundabouts have only eight conflict points. Roundabouts also have slower speeds, typically between 15 and 25 miles per hour. Due to the reduced conflict points and slower speeds, roundabouts reduce the potential for severe left turn and angle crashes. The roundabout option also improves traffic, traffic operations at the intersection and significantly reduces congestion. The proposed roundabout is estimated to reduce traffic delays by approximately 52% in the evening rush hour and 80% in the morning rush hour using the projected traffic volumes for the year 2040. Both the enhanced signal and roundabout improve operations. The traffic signal option achieves a greater reduction in delays during the evening hours, while the roundabout option achieves better operations during the morning rush hour. The roundabout also achieves a higher degree of safety and requires less right of way than the traffic signal option. For those of you who can see the slide, this is what the proposed roundabout will look like once constructed. This view is looking from northeast to southwest. In addition to the roundabout, improvements include pedestrian and bicycle facilities, landscaping in the center island, and lighting for vehicular traffic, as well as pedestrians. If you are on the telephone in listen-only mode, you can log on to the project website at www.cflroads.com slash project slash 431922-1 to view this presentation. Similarly, for those who can see the slide, this is what the proposed roundabout will look like at night once constructed. This view is again looking from northeast to southwest. <coughs> now we'll take a look at the roundabout in action. Please note that this video is also posted on the project website. Starting from north of the intersection looking south, the video shows the proposed roundabout as well as the adjacent future development including the redeveloped gas station in the foreground, another gas station to the near right, and the new animal hospital in the far right across the intersection. 
The traffic that is shown in this video is the forecasted average traffic volume during the evening rush hour in the year 2040. Looking past the intersection to the east along State Road 44, note the roadway widening for the left turn that extends to Talisman Lane. Each entry approach to the roundabout consists of two lanes. There are also right turn bypass lanes that will allow right turns from eastbound State Road 44 to southbound Kepler Road, westbound State Road 44 to northbound Kepler Road, and northbound Kepler Road to eastbound State Road 44 without entering the roundabout. As vehicles approach the roundabout, note how they slow down and yield to oncoming traffic and then proceed when traffic is clear. There are sidewalks and crosswalks at all approaches. The design proposes to install rectangular rapid flashing beacons or RRFBs at the pedestrian crosswalks. There are also sidewalk ramps that allow bicyclists to exit the roadway and travel onto the sidewalk at the intersection. The roundabout will have raised medians extending about 275 to 500 feet from the intersection on both State Road 44 and Kepler Road. As a result, all driveways for both gas stations and the new animal hospital would be right in and right out. In other words, vehicles will not be able to turn left into or out of those properties. All of the businesses have driveways on both State Road 44 and Kepler Road to provide access to and from both roadways. To safely navigate the roundabout, it is important to follow the signing and pavement markings. Once a driver is in the correct lane, they should not change lanes within the roundabout. To continue straight through, drivers may use either of the two lanes, yield to pedestrians and to oncoming traffic, and then proceed. Left turn move maneuvers can only be made from the inside lane. Drivers will perform the same yield operation and then proceed past the oncoming lanes and follow the circle to make the left turn. Right turns from eastbound and westbound State Road 44, as well as northbound Kepler Road, will use the right turn bypass lanes. This traffic does not enter the roundabout, but still must yield to oncoming traffic. Bicyclists have two options to navigate the roundabout. The first option is to exit the roadway via the bicycle ramp and use the sidewalks and crosswalks to complete their maneuver. The second option is to remain within the roadway and go through the roundabout in the same fashion as a motor vehicle. As mentioned, the crosswalks of the roundabout will be equipped with rectangular rapid flashing beacons or RRFBs. RRFBs increase visibility of the crosswalk and help to alert drivers that a pedestrian is present. The pedestrian pushes a button to activate the flashing yellow lights. Pedestrians should look and wait for vehicles in both approach lanes to yield before crossing the street. To safely cross the roundabout, pedestrians should use the sidewalk and marked crosswalks and never enter the center of the roundabout. To find out more information online about roundabouts and how to use them, please go to fdot.tips roundabout. You can also go to www.safety.fhwa.gov intersection innovative roundabouts or www.fdot.gov slash agency resources slash roundabouts. This project will require construction of new stormwater retention areas to help control water runoff. Water will be collected by curb inlets and roadside swales and carried to the retention areas to the northeast and southeast of the intersection. This project does not include, does not affect any wetlands within the project area. Other improvements include repaving within the project lim limits and widening State Road 44 east of the intersection to provide a two-way left turn lane to Talisman Lane. Right-of-way acquisition is needed for this project. The amount of property expected to be purchased is currently estimated to be under six acres. There is one full parcel purchase anticipated in the northeast quadrant of the intersection for pond construction. No relocations are expected. 
the department will contact affected property owners directly to begin the acquisition process. Anyone with questions about right-of-way associated with this project is encouraged to contact FDOT project manager Todd Helton by phone at 386-943-5207, by email at todd.helton at dot.state.fl.us, or by U.S. mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, mail station 542, the land, Florida, 32720. The final plans for this project are anticipated to be submitted in summer of 2021. Right of way needed for this project is estimated at $4.2 million. Construction is estimated to cost about $4.7 million and is not yet funded. To find out more information about this project, please go to our project webpage on the FDOT's Central Florida website, www.cflroads.com. Type the project number 431-922-1 in the search box at the top of the page, then click on Go. Public hearing materials are available on the website now and a recording of this public hearing will be posted to the website within a week after the hearing. Your feedback is important to us and we encourage you to share your questions and comments. One way is to provide a verbal comment during this public hearing. In a few minutes, we will open the floor to receive verbal comments. If you are attending in person and wish to provide a verbal comment, please turn in your speaker request card to a member of the project team. We will call the in-person speakers to the microphone one at a time. Please limit your comments to three, min three minutes so that we can have an opportunity to hear from everyone. If you are attending virtually, please use the question pane to type in your name and I wish to speak. The host will call your name and unmute your microphone. You may also need to click on the microphone icon in your control panel. The icon will turn green when you are unmuted. If you are calling in by telephone, you are in listen-only mode. Please contact FDOT project manager Todd Helton after the hearing to provide comment. You can reach him by phone at 386-943-5207 or by email at todd.helton at dot.state. Fl .us. A second way to provide your comment is in writing. In-person attendees can fill out the comment card from your folder and drop it in the comments box at the exit or send it back later to the address shown on the form. Virtual attendees may type a comment into the question pane or download a comment form from the handout section of the GoToWebinar and return it to the address shown on the form. All attendees may also email FDOT project manager Todd Helton directly at todd.helton at dot.state.fl.us. Finally, you can use the Ask a Question button on the project webpage of our CFL Roads website at www.cflroads.com slash project slash 431-922-1. While comments are accepted anytime, comments received by February 5th, 2021 will become part of the record for this hearing. As a reminder, if you are listening in by telephone or would like more information, you can contact the FDOT project manager, Todd Helton, by phone at 386-943-5207, by email at todd.helton at dot.state.fl.us, or by U.S. mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, mail station 542, the land, Florida, 32720. You may also contact project consultant, Nick Harrison, by phone at 813-460-2633, I'm sorry, 36, I'm sorry, 2622, by email at n-h-a-r-r-i-s-o-n at structurepoint.com, or by mail at 5405 Cypress Center Drive, Suite 325, Tampa, Florida, 33609. We will now turn it over for the verbal comments. Todd? All right. Uh, again, we want to thank you for your interest in this project and for taking the time to participate in the public hearing. Uh, we'll now begin the formal comment period to hear your questions and comments. As a reminder, we'll respond to all questions and comments in writing after the hearing. 
Um, for those attending in person, if you've not already done so, please complete a speaker request card and turn that into a team member. For those online who wish to speak, please type your name and I wish to speak into the question pane. We ask that you limit your questions and comments to three minutes. Uh, we'll begin with those attending in person. When your name's called, please come to the microphone and provide your name and address. If you represent an organization, please also provide the name of the organization. And our first speaker is uh, Ms. Karen Clark. We're over there, sorry. Hello, Will. I don't know which direction. This is. Karen, can you hear it? Okay, Karen Clark, uh, 1855 Grand Avenue in Deland, otherwise known as Glenwood. Um, uh, now I gotta read this. This is a project that should remain unfunded. Whoever started this obviously doesn't live here. It does need a right turning lane in each of the lanes at the intersection. That would make it a lot easier. Um, it would be safer to have a dedicated uh, traffic officer in the morning and the evening to actually direct traffic at that turn. Uh, as a Sergio Oliva was a Chicago traffic control. He always said that that was the best way to regulate traffic in heavy times like we have in the morning and the evening. Uh, let me see. My eyesight. Da, 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 da. Oh, the video sound is awful. They should really coordinate that because it was overpowered by the music. But at after morn in the morning and afternoons, you have a lot of vehicles and trucks because it is the county, state, city seat over there. And that's a few thousand um, employees. Plus, you have the medical facility, which changes its names at least every two years. They have hundreds of employees coming out at the same time. And if you're going to a circle, I unfortunately have to use the Grand Avenue and 44 circle, which the trucks are still plowing through and the ca cars are still going through things. It's, it, it's not working there. But this is a worse intersection because of the amount of people. If you have dedicated lights that you had is called a best signal controlled option with right learn right turning lanes as well added in and you can add some lights that would be a really good suggestion but having that circle let me tell you living down there by the grand avenue one i'm not so sure but the best signal controlled option with right turn lanes and added light would really be probably the best for people thank you thank you for your comment Okay, our next uh, speaker is Mr. Lawrence Lubinsky. Good evening, my name is Lawrence Lubinsky. I live at 2042 Barbarossa Avenue, Deltona. Uh, my comments, I'm glad you guys are doing a lot of work on seeing the best way, but having driven and yielded and gone through about 25 different roundabouts in Volusia, Seminole, Flagler, and Marion counties, I know that there are some drivers who are going into them, if they're in a larger vehicle, they refuse to yield to drivers already in, in the roundabouts. This must lead to a much larger percentage of accidents that aren't being reported. I don't see how you can improve on the standard red light, green light with clear turn, rain, clear turn lanes. If you must change the timing at the lights due to the high traffic times, do what you must. But please don't get rid of the lights at Kepler and Highway 44. And having seen the video, the best signal light option seems to be a much clearer path and enforcement vehicle than a roundabout. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker is Mr. George Hauserman. picture 
picture of the uh, traffic moving on the circle? I don't know that we can go back. Hmm? I don't know that we can go back. Can we go? We can't go back, can we, to the presentation and put the picture of the traffic? We can address it at the end with you yeah. at the end, but can, related. can you do that? We can't put it up right now, but we can address oh, okay. it. Okay, <clears throat> I'll work around it. Okay. Yeah, my name is George Hauserman. I live on uh, Timber Cove off of Lake Charles Road. We're the first street north of 44 on Kepler. I'm going to have a problem with this circle because right now we can't get out of Lake Charles Road going south, can't get across. The only time you can get across is when the red light on Kepler turns red, that leaves a space so you get across. We have another problem coming the other way from the north. Uh, the only stoplight there is Minnesota. And we can't turn left onto Lake Charles Road because of the traffic coming the other way. So we have to wait for the red light again so we can turn left. In the meantime, all the cars behind me, 99% travel on the grass to get around when you're making a left-hand turn, which is not a good idea. So I think probably an easement or some kind of a side road going north and south would help, but that still doesn't help getting across into going south. Uh, right now, the wait time is almost five minutes to get across Kepler going south from Lake Charles Road. I mean, it's terrible. If I have to get to work, I got to count extra time just because I can't get out there. I'm lucky nobody's gotten hit yet. Because uh, you try to step on the gas to get out there quick and somebody's going to get hit. That's all, that's all I have. Thank you for your, your comments, sir. <clears throat> Okay, our, our next speaker is Mr. Rod Black. My name is Rod Black. I live at uh, 108 East George Street. Uh, first of all, I'm against the roundabout. There should be some type of improvement, but a roundabout is not the answer. Second of all, if it is approved, there should be more education on how to use it. We see it here, but we, we come out of our, our way to see it. The public doesn't get this education. Uh, so you, you kind of have to force feed the public on how to use it correctly. Third of all, <clears throat> George Street, is the closest street to the uh, the intersection. If you look at the map, it's like a half a block south on Kepler from the intersection. The previous uh, speaker uh, getting in a, out of his uh, street, multiply that twice, that's what George Street is. You cannot get out of George Street unless the light is red and somebody let you out. Uh, and again, if you're traveling south from the intersection and want to turn left onto George Street, good luck. But I see on this map, they have a double yellow line there at George Street, which means I can't turn left at all. I have to go all the way down to uh, Orange Camp, which they're bu building a, another roundabout there, and then I have to use the roundabout to come back and turn onto my street. So I hope you'll address that that issue uh, of George Street turning left, going in, and turning uh, left going out of George Street. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, our next speaker is Mr. Ryan Finnegan. Good 
evening, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of. Uh, I'm Ryan Finnegan. I live at 202 South Kepler Road. I am the first residence to the south and west of the intersection. I believe that the roundabout is appropriate. Uh, they don't teach driver's ed in Florida, so it's just something people are going to have to learn how to use currently. There are no pedestrian crosswalks at the intersection. Traffic blocks up for thousands of feet on South Kepler. Emergency vehicles get jammed up and delayed. Uh, bad attitudes. You'd think that most people out there were sailors and not drivers as much as they cuss at each other. Uh, cell phone use causes accidents at stoplights. The roundabout, you got to slow down. You got to go around a curve. You'll pay attention. Uh, it'll make the intersection more safe and efficient. And I'd also like to cite the improved safety statistics at Grand and 44, since you guys put the roundabout out there, because uh, everybody knows we lost a grandmother and three babies out there a couple years ago. Uh, and also, where I pull out of, I can't go to the intersection at all. Google directs me down to Taylor and over to I-4 through Lake Helen. So it would make a big difference. I think the car is not stopping and backing up would let you guys out of your residence a little bit easier. Uh, right now, it stops. It's still flowing. There's space. Um, you got to be a little more aggressive to get out into it. I think they should have a turning lane going into George also to alleviate their problems. And uh, there's plenty of right away on my side to do that. And that's it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, and our next speaker is Ms. Deborah Black. All right, my name is Deborah Black and I live at 108 East George Street. Uh, first, I'd like to thank you for putting in more retention ponds. We def desperately need them in the area since Victoria Park started up. Also, I'd like to thank you for starting the right turn bypass lane north of George Street. However, uh, people right now use the shoulder, the grass, to create an extension of the lanes now blocking George Street. Um, so how are you going to prevent people from using the shoulder uh, south of George Street and the mouth of George Street to create their own extension of your right turn bypass lane? Uh, if there's some kind of concrete curb, something of that nature might help. Uh, uh, how are you going to actually slow traffic and enforce the yield? Because people coming off of Kepler Road are doing 60 miles an hour and they don't slow down for the circles. I've been through the circle three times today at Bearsford at the Walmart, and people don't slow down. Um, people barely yield. Uh, so unless traffic is stopped, we will not get in and out of our street, as was previously mentioned. Also, your little animation of expected traffic at the circle in 2024 is hysterical. That's like midday, where without peak hours, you're going to have to multiply that by five to get some realistic traffic patterns. And there are another over a thousand more homes, most of which will have two cars, being built in and around that general vicinity. This is this is no realistic re, uh, representation of traffic. Uh, also, I'd like to point out that in your own presentation, the worst traffic is in the evening peak hour, and the presentation pointed out that a light system, an enhanced stoplight system, would help that a lot more than a roundabout. Uh, so I guess that's it. That's what I have to say. All right, thank you. Okay, I think um, that's all of our in-person speakers. Uh, we'll now open the floor to our virtual attendees. Again, if you wish to speak, please let us know by typing your name and I wish to speak into the question pane. Our online host will call your name and unmute your microphone. You may need to also click on the microphone icon in your control panel to unmute locally. 
the icon will be green when you when you are unmuted. Um, for those calling in by phone, please contact me directly at 386-943-5207 or by email at todd.helton at dot.state.fl.us. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. Our, our first speaker is Jackson Hurst. Go ahead, Mr. Hurst. He basically transformed UCF football. Jackson. Mr. Hurst. Sorry, let me, um, Jackson Hurst is our first speaker. I'm not sure he was quite ready. So let me unmute him again. Mr. Hurst, are you ready? I thought you and dad were going to help me. We, we are. I'm just saying. Okay. We'll just wait a second for Mr. Hurst. Um, then I'm going to go next to Jason Krzyzewski. Give me one moment, Jason. Okay, Jason, you should be able to unmute your microphone and make your comment. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Thank you. Hi, thank you. Hey, first of all, I'd like to point out that I appreciate all the hard work that you guys are doing. And um, I do see a lot of success in roundabouts. And my question to you is I live right here on Talisman Lane. That would be the most, uh, let's see, easterly direction of the project, right where the two lanes goes around Winnemesset. And I have some of the most trouble trying to get in and out of that area. So I'm trying to actually find out, like, are you going past Talisman Lane? And if so, how far? And then what is your plans there for the approach? Are you going to be buying up some property right away on our side, which I live on Talisman Lane side, the first house. And I was wondering if you're buying a property there so we'd have a shorter approach. And then would we, would, we, would we have to cross two lanes of traffic to get out to go east, or I'm sorry, west into D-Land? That was a lot of questions if you catch all that. Thank you, Mr. Krzyzewski. We will be responding to all questions and comments in writing after the hearing. We do appreciate your questions. Okay. Sorry, Mr. Krzyzewski, I might have yeah. accidentally. <laughs> oh, Sorry, I didn't, mean to, I didn't mean to cut you off there. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. That was really my main concern. Like I said, I was just wanting to find out the right of way because I did look at the plans and saw that they were going to be buying like 16,000 square feet in this quadrant of two homes. So obviously it was must have going to be going to our approach and if they were going to asphalt that. And um, are they going to widen past Talisman Lane, which I think I already asked. Correct. And then, oh, is there going to be sidewalks down on, like, how far down will the sidewalks extend on each direction of the roundabout? Will they be going down to Talisman Lane to the end of the project? Like, will they be going to the end of the project on Kepler and the end of the project on, let's see, what is that, MLK or towards that, that area, Kepler? Okay, thank you. Like I said, we will be responding to all the questions in writing after the hearing. Okay. Was there anything, was there anything else? Um, my last question is the same thing. I don't want to sound redundant, but if anybody's familiar with turning into Talisman Lane, um, you know, you kind of have traffic pushing in on you and there's some asphalt millings on the side of the road there that we kind of take advantage of, like a drop off, but we kind of use it as a lane. I was wondering if there's going to be any kind of like not a dedicated turn lane, obviously, for just five houses to turn in here, but something like that, that would traffic would keep moving in the center lane or where does it narrow up again? So it's probably two and three fold of the same question. And that's all I got. Thank you. Um, I'm going to try Mr. Hurst again. Um, Mr. Hurst, if you're listening, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you if you would like to make your comment. Uh, sorry about that. Um, I was uh, on the phone with my dad, and um, sorry, sorry. But um, okay, so I approve and support the State Road 44 Kepler Road roundabout. I especially like how the right turn lane 
from westbound 44 onto northbound Kepler Road will be separated by a median. But I do have a, suggest a suggestion though. I honestly think the best way to do public outreach regarding roundabout projects, especially in Volusia County, because I've noticed that a lot of residents, especially in Daytona Beach, and especially the ones that live on A1A and just over the Halifax River Bridge, they are completely opposed to a roundabout at A1A and US 92. So I think a really good way to improve the public's response to roundabout projects is to host a pre-construction open house where you have an educational component to it where you'll basically where you can basically educate the public about how roundabouts work and maybe even have a drive-through uh, simulator where the public can take a drive through a roundabout and actually see how it works. My final comment is, uh, frankly, I think in the meantime, uh, the best thing that you can do is put up additional warning signs, especially on the approaches to the roundabout, and also put in rumble stripes especially at the uh, approaches to the roundabout as well. That will inform drivers that they are approaching a roundabout and that they need to slow their speeds down. Thank you, Mr. Hurst. At this time, we do not have any other online participants that have requested to speak. I want to thank you for your input regarding the State Road 44 and Kepler Road roundabout project. Um, all the materials shared at tonight's meeting are available on our project webpage at www.cflroads.com slash project slash 431922-1. Um, a recording of this hearing will also be posted by January 26th. Um, since we have no other speakers, we will now close the hearing. Uh, we have the time. Um, hold on one second, because I just had somebody that typed something in. So I'm going to go back to Mr. Krzyzewski for just one second. Okay. I think he wanted to make another comment. I apologize. He just typed that in. Mr. Krzyzewski? Hi. Sorry to bother you one more time. Again, I appreciate you. I remembered my other two questions. Um, when you do these flyover, these plans uh, that show the just propose of what things are going to be, Will they be a little more detailed in the future? Will, will they actually go down to Talisman Lane so we would be able to see what a flyover might look like or like plans when you do send back some um, snail mail, maybe show like what it's gonna be proposed to look like at this intersection where I'm at here on this curve. And then my last and final question is, is there gonna be any other projects working along at the same time um like I'm, i heard the blue lake extension that's what blue lake dead ends you know to cut through the college are they trying to like uh, kind of open that up a little bit faster so that they can alleviate some of the traffic flow while they're doing work down on this end and that's my final question and again i appreciate everybody's hard work thank you thank you sir um, for those who are attending online, just a reminder in the handout section of the GoToWebinar, there is a handout that is a um, kind of a plan view that shows an, an aerial overlay of the project. Um, and you are encouraged to download that from the GoToWebinar. That same handout was provided to the in-person attendees in their project folders. So Todd, that is, I believe that might be it for the online participants. Okay, um, so um, if we have no other speakers, we'll now close the hearing and the time is 6.27 p.m. Okay.
The Episcopal Church down from Lake Charles Road, which is the next uh, building down, that has turn lanes going in and out of the church, which is used once a, once a week. How did they get the turn lanes? And our, our road, Lake Charles Road, has traffic every day and doesn't have any. I think if you'd extend that turn lane all the way down to Lake Charles Road, would it help? Uh, you'd have to look at that, but that turn lane uh, in and out of the church, uh, they have double yellow lines, so people have a chance to get over there and don't have to go on the grass to get around. That's it. Thank you very much, sir. Um, does anybody else? Okay, for those who are attending online, um, I will leave the window open for just a, a minute or two longer in case you have a question or comment you would like to type into the question pane for us. We will be responding to all of the questions and comments in writing. Sorry, Carolyn, we have one more uh, in-person oh, comment. Oh, I apologize, okay. Okay, uh, Deborah Black, George Street. Um, my new comment is in the very beginning of this presentation you talked about concrete dividers in all directions, 200 feet minimum from the intersection. Um, this is gonna come very close to George Street and I really would like to know exactly where that's planned to end. And again, you're impacting Lake Charles, George, Talisman and Voorhees, uh, probably all the way down past the Circle K. All of this needs to be included in future aerials, future plans, future diagrams, um, that's it. All right, thank you. All right, we'd like to thank everyone for attending and uh, have a good evening.